this meeting to order order at uh, 732 the Wednesday, October 5th, 2022 meeting of the Fairfax County History uh, Commission agenda. Um, tonight, uh, my name is Cheryl Repetti. Same thing. Oh, no the, sound. No, you guys aren't hearing me? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, okay. I, I just heard somebody say no sound. So, um, and uh, and I'm speaking to you from uh, Center of if everyone who is online, I know that's what I did. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we all need to mute. Yeah. So if you could just hover your um, turn it up so your, I can hear it. Your cursor over your um, microphone and then click on the microphone. It'll I'll turn your microphone off and we, we won't hear all that background noise. All right, so um, commissioners excused tonight include Gretchen Bulova, Subi Madi, Ann Barnes, Jordan Tenenbaum, and Elise Murray. Um, and I'm going to call a- uh, She wasn't excused earlier. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the History Commission needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. The motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. And I'm going to start with Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy from Bragg District in Springfield. Okay. Um, and so, let's see. Could you not hear me? Yeah, yes, I could. Okay, all right, okay. Doing a quick look, see if I can see who whose mic is open. Let's get where are we getting that feedback from? Oh, um, Carol Herrick, are you on? I'm here, Drainsville right. District. Thank you, Barbara Nape. Barbara Nape's here, Reston, Hunter Mill, okay. and Stunts. And stunts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you need you to unmute. Sure. There we go. Nope. And right stunts, now. Hunter Mill. I'm here. Yeah. Yay. Hey. All right. Uh, Steve Sherman. <laughs> Steve. Well, her, you might have to uh, mute everybody for a second. Thank you. And let's see if, okay, you still have me unmuted. Thank you. Uh, Steve Sherman. You'll have to unmute Steve and, or allow people to unmute themselves now. Steve? Okay, Steve Sherman in Franconia, representing Franconia District. Okay, Phyllis Walker Ford. Phyllis Walker Ford, Franconia District, uh, representing Franconia District, but I'm in Clifton. Okay, Barbara Peters. Barbara Peters in Annandale Mason District. Sally Lyons. Sally, <coughs> Sally Lyons in Colchester, Mount Vernon District. Tammy Manorino. Tammy Manorino, Mount Vernon District. Sue Kovach Schumann. Sue Kovach Schumann in Mantua, Providence District. Okay. Uh, Janae Lindner. I'm here, but I'm having real problems on my computer. I may need to have to go out and try to come in. I'm here on my phone. Okay. Can you see um, me? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm seeing heads nod. So. Okay. Sorry. I it, for some reason something I anyway. I'll try to work. Yeah. Bye. Okay. But you can hear us. Oops. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. I just can't. I just can't see you all. Uh, Esther. Esther McCullough. Sorry. Esther McCullough, Sully District. Okay. Uh, 
Robert Beach. Bob, are you here? It's feedback. Okay, so we're all right. So Bob Beach uh, hasn't responded yet. Lynn Gary Hodge. Then you have to unmute yourself, please. Thank you. I had done that and then I didn't. Um, hi, Lynn Garvey Hodge, Commissioner at Large, currently in Springfield District. Okay. And David Meyer. David, are you with us? Yes. Oh. Yeah. David Meyer, are you with us yet? Or is that, that's Elliot under David, isn't it? Oh, wait, there he goes. I saw him yeah. briefly. I'm sorry, Cheryl. This this is Elliot. This is. OK. Yeah. All right. So uh, perhaps David and Bob will join us later, but we still have a quorum um, even without that. So we can proceed. Um, at this point, I'm going to pass the virtual gavel to the vice to our, uh, our vice chair, Lynn, and so that I can make the appropriate motions. I move that the History Commission certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. Second. You should... <laughs> second, second, Barbara seconds. Yeah, so. <laughs> Say, I'm gonna Sue just... Schumann was in there first. <laughs> it I doesn't matter. With her second. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll just go ahead. Um, so. So all those in favor say aye. 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 OK, any opposed? Any nay? Oh, sorry, that's the same thing. <laughs> this is a good night. <laughs> and he abstains. All right, we'll continue. Uh, motion passes. Um, and I move that the, uh, sorry, we, second, I move that the History Commission certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pande COVID pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the public to physically attend this meeting in person, or the, the usual uh, procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the History Commission uh, conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting by calling 1571-429-5982 and entering access code 536-595-022. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Um, but finally, I move that the History Commission certify that matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself, are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government, and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations in the discharge of the History Commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Second. Thank you. Uh, any, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, motion passes. And I'm just going to ask, you know, we have a number of members of the public who are part of the presenting group tonight. And if just, if you please uh, keep those microphones muted unless you are actually uh, speaking uh, as part of the presentation. Um, and we're going to begin with a, a sad announcement from uh, Phyllis Walker Ford. Good evening. By now, most of you know the announcement that I'm going to make, and that is that my term um, at the end of this, this year, December 31st, 
I will be leaving the History Commission to go off and do uh, still here in the county, but I'll be going uh, basically to uh, be, continue to be the director of the Law Grove School Museum. I just want you to know that it's been a pleasure to work with each of you. And uh, I've been on the commission since 2009. I was appointed then by uh, then Lee District Supervisor Jeff McKay. And so every time it came up for um, my renewal, he always approved me uh, being there. And the last supervisor or the current supervisor for Franklin U District is Rodney Lusk. And I met with him last week and we talked about, do I continue to do or not? And I said, no, it's time for a new person to take over. So I've enjoyed my time. And uh, the last two years have really been personal for me because Mary Lipsy and I have chaired the um, AAHI committee, collecting, uh, asking each um, representative from the History Commission to go out into your district and locate the African-American history that's been documented in your district and to uh, work so that we could create a database that George Mason students would put together for us and be able to share all of that collected African-American history to the public in an interactive way. So I appreciate everything that everybody on the commission has done and all the hard work that you did, uh, especially those of you who, when Mary and I were talking to you at 11 o'clock at night on a weekend, uh, we asked you to do something and you actually did that. So I appreciate everything and I look forward to staying in connection with you and uh, hope that you will visit me at Ball Grove School Museum. Thank you. Barbara. I'd like to say something. Um, uh, so Esther, uh, Barbara had her hand up and then I'll recognize uh, Esther. Um, I, I just have to recognize and applaud Phyllis. She's been my teacher. And I told her when we were beginning the AHI that um, I was willing but unknowing. And I have learned so much from her and I have such great respect for her and so I'm I hope we can continue as you know as friends and she will keep continue to keep teaching me but she's done an incredible incredible job so I applaud you Phyllis thank you and, and I will stay in touch with everyone Esther and then Lynn Phyllis I object <laughs> <laughs> your motion is mute you can't leave <laughs> I second <laughs> Esther's objection. <laughs> so, so we really appreciate the time that you spent with us. You've been dedicated and a hard worker. Uh, you really put your nose to, to the grindstone, you and Mary, and we really appreciate that because the whole commission gets the accolades for your work. But because you have been a delight to work with, uh, and we we know your heart is in the history, so go back to Laurel Grove, but come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn, you unmute yourself, and then I, Barbara oh, okay. Peters, did you okay. raise your hand after that? Go ahead, Lynn. I, I just wanted to second uh, Esther's motion, but uh, Esther, it has been a joy for me also to work with you. And you probably don't know this, but many years ago behind the scenes, I actually went to Dana Kaufman to say, get Phyllis on board. And eventually it happened and we have had you and you are just the epitome of, of class and elegance and grace and all that you do. Um, I'm so grateful of the hard work that you and Mary put in. I do hope you'll plan to be at the conference because we will be announcing yes. this, this special presentation to the young men that worked with you from George Mason and um, need to figure out a way to, to do those presentations. And I'd love to have you and Mary kind of be joint uh, presenters in the moment for that. But thank you. You've, you've been a real joy and an inspiration and we've gotten to be good personal friends and have shared the world of Clifton. And uh, I don't believe in saying goodbye. So we'll just put a bookmark here for, for thank an hour. Thank you. I, I, I will be around. Um, and, and I'm sure I'll, I'll be coming to look at some of you, each of you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Anne? I'd like to just...
third, fourth, or fifth, or all of the above, the Esther's comment, um, and we'll really miss you, Phyllis. Yeah, I, I will <laughs> will reiterate all of that, that sentiment also. We will really miss you. And and yes, you are for somebody who does have that wonderful class and, and elegance. It is, it is delightful just to sit and talk to you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and some of us have so only we, begun to learn from you, Phyllis. So um, you have so much to share, and um, and we're just going to have to keep it going in other ways. Um, thank <laughs> well, you. I never realized that um, growing up here in, in Fairfax County and in, in, the, in the Lee District, Franconia District area, I never realized that the connections with fam my family and, and the people uh, across the county uh, that we were all making history, and, and, and that came out as we were doing the, the AAHI project. It kept coming out that I'm connected to this person over here and this person over here. So uh, I'm, I'm really proud of, of all of those connections, and I'm still learning some of others. So mm -hmm. thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, you still, we still need to get together so you can teach me about the place where I work, not where I live. But, you know, so I have a better understanding of that history. Thank you. Thank you for all of your service to the commission. Thank you, Cheryl. And I, and I, I promised you lunch and we still have to do it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so moving along, uh, we have a special presentation tonight by the German Germantown Cemetery Preservation Society. Um, and Constance, if you wish to take the floor, you're welcome. And I will, um, when you ask for it, I can bring up your presentation, the slides. Um, so Constance, you're gonna have to uh, unmute yourself. You'll see there's a little icon of your uh, microphone. And if you just click on that, it should, oh. you should be able. There we oh. go. I'm unmuted, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Connie Smith, and I'm a member of the Germantown Cemetery Preservation Society. Um, there are three board members, uh, Ron Crittenden, who is the president, Linnell Naylor, who's the vice president, and myself, who is the secretary slash treasurer. Um, the Germantown Cemetery Preservation Society was established uh, a year ago, October the 4th, a year and one day ago because today is October the 5th. Um, and uh, as such, I would like to give a presentation or talk about the Germantown Cemetery. And the purpose of it is, is to uh, make the commission and uh, aware of the Germantown Cemetery if you, you're not, you don't already know about the Germantown Cemetery. So in saying that, I have a little presentation I put together and Cheryl will bring it up for me. And I, will and I want to say hello to Abby, helping Miss Connie. Um, hey, I'm one as well. So hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to acknowledge that Linda is here. <laughs> hey, Hello. Bye, Linnell. It's Janae. Good night, everyone. <laughs> All right. So All here's right. your slides. There is the first page. Let's go to the, uh, well, this is a, the first page is a picture of the Germantown Cemetery. Um, next page. So Germantown Cemetery is a one acre parcel of land where there are 138 enslaved and freed African Americans uh, who are buried there. Next slide, please. Uh, Germantown Cemetery is located in Fairfax City, Virginia, on the south side of Route 50, which is Lee Highway, and a fourth mile west of Route 29, which is Lee Highway. Next. Germantown Cemetery was a major institution in the life of African Americans in Fairfax, Virginia, after the Civil War. Next. And uh, it was developed with the influence of the Freedmen's Bureau for a benevolent group. And the Freedmen's Bureau uh, was a bureau that was established after the Civil War in order to help uh, freed uh, slaves 
acclimate to life, help them with, with getting employment and housing and that sort of thing. Next. Germantown Cemetery was part of Richard Radcliffe's Mount Vineyard Plantation. Next, please. And Richard Radcliffe established the Fairfax County Courthouse and he created the town of Providence, which, uh, which is known today as the city of Fairfax. Next. So it is likely that Germantown Cemetery began around uh, the year 1787 as part of Richard Radcliffe's land holdings. Next. Next. Tony, I can read from here. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. We wait on the next slide. <laughs> Richard Radcliffe oh, sold the cemetery. Uh-oh, go back. Oh, okay. Here we go. Go back. Go back. Please. There's a little delay, I think, between um, when I hit the button and when you see the uh, slide. Oh, so. OK. <laughs> Richard Radcliffe sold the cemetery to William T. Ramsey, who deeded it to the trustees of the Colored Lounge Number no. 4 Burial Sons and Daughters of the Benevolence of Fairfax County, Virginia. Next. It was deeded on August the 24th, 1868 as a burial ground for African-Americans. The cemetery was needed because African-Americans were not allowed to bury their dead in the, in the Fairfax Courthouse Cemetery. The cemetery contains remains of little known yet important people from the Fairfax count from, from the Fairfax community who helped to successfully develop Fairfax City. They were laborers, farmers, field hands, cooks, laundress, housekeepers, craft workers, blacksmith, carpenters, teachers, preachers, doctors, and soldiers. Notably buried in the cemetery are Horace Gibson and Moses Parker, which are my um, ancestors, free men who managed to purchase land in Annandale, Virginia, and establish a blacksmith shop. And Korean War veteran James A. Harris, 1930 to 1973, and Morris W. Harris, 1928 to 1991. and George Lamb, a free black man who served in the Confederate Army as a body servant to Captain W.H. Delaney of the Fairfax, is that Rifles? I think it's called Rifles, I can't see the bottom part. Fairfax Rifles. Rifles, okay, thank you. And Alfred Willie, who emerged from enslavement and procured land in the Fairfax courthouse area. The names of others known to be buried in a cemetery will be called out later in, the, in this program. Germantown Cemetery is a 154 and possibly more year old landmark holding historical, cultural, and archaeological value. It is vital. It is a vital access to Fairfax City's history. And so, Ms. Wanna, Connie, yeah, wanna, okay. so that is the end of the presentation. Um, but we wanted to we wanted to present it to cause awareness of this of the cemetery when whenever and wherever we wherever we can. Great, wonderful. Thank you for thank coming out. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Linnell. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yes. Um, 
I today, seeing that this was going to be a presentation, went on Find a Grave to see how many of the uh, markers were photographed and and up on Find a Grave. Um, are, is there any effort to make sure that all of them are photographed and recorded? I well, I can answer that question. Um, Yes, well, one thing that we did, the Germantown Cemetery Preservation Society, others have too, but we have gone to the cemetery and we've walked the cemetery step by step and inch by inch and took pictures of all of the grave markers. Um, they were just a guesstimation. I think there were about 50 grave markers um, that we photographed and then there were um, other types of markers in there as well. Uh, an, a, another project that has been lent to the Germantown Cemetery is the process of, of man. I think she, can you guys not hear? I think what she was trying to say was that. Um, She's muted. Okay, is that we just recently had a GPR done to Germantown Cemetery. And so we're, we were guesstimating um, less bad, you know, people buried there, but there's actually more people buried there. Um, and so I think that's what she's trying to mention, that we are in the process of confirming, um, at least trying to get as close as we can to the number of people that are buried there. I know Mr. Barrows did mention um, when we had our Germantown Cemetery Legacy Day that the cemetery has been well used. And so if you can kind of guesstimate what he's trying to say, he's trying to say in so many words and being professional that there are a lot of people that are buried there, more than what we think. And Ms. McLeod, you have a, Ms. McCullen, hello, you have a question? Yes, I do. When yes, it says lodge number four, what does that refer to? I believe, and I'm not positively sure, um, and Mary, you can probably chime in or Janae. I believe that was the name that was given at that point in time because it was considered as something similar to um, I guess like a, a organization at that point in time. I haven't really, you know, um, did uh, further research on that. But if someone else can chime in that knows Fairfax City better yeah. than I do, I appreciate I, it. I, I can explain that to her. There was there was a, a uh, brothers and sisters benevolent society that was a national organization that was actually started before the civil wars, and it went. And what its goal was, was to help African-Americans who were in trouble for any reason, like their house burned down or um, someone got sick, that kind of thing. It was, a, it was another mechanism besides the church that could be used. And they had these throughout the area. And one of them was called Fairfax Station. It was Lodge Number 4. So when they wanted to have the cemetery, what they did is they used this lodge. They picked three people to be the trustees. They went and presented it to the court. And then my dog's very happy. <laughs> Sorry. There's a fox. He, they're, they're dachshunds. So foxes get real exciting at night. But basically, so that's what it was. And so they were, they were in existence, I guess, um, and the last one, basically, this national organization ended in 1930. But it was very closely associated with the church. Kind of reminded me of, you know, a, a Lions Club kind of wrapped up with the YWCA. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, was, so it was associated with their communities in a very unique way and certainly a very important way. Mm -hmm. uh, let me add that this also... Esther, there's another sons and daughters in the Vienna area. So if you're yeah. looking up the cemetery, they are both, you know, listed with sons and daughters. Uh, so you have mm -hmm. to see which one you're looking at. Yes, yeah. I'm yeah. well aware that First Baptist Church of Vienna, and it's still active. Right. It's owned by the church and it's still active. But right. when we talk about lodges, there is a lodge in Vienna for African Americans. And I just wondered about the number designation and whether there were, you know, lodge number one, two, and three. That well, I can't I, answer for you. I don't what know. I, what I do know is they did 
divided up into areas. So this included, I know, the Washington DC area. So you figure, obviously, Fairfax, Fairfax uh, Courthouse was number four, and I guess Vienna was number five. So, you know, what what were the numbers earlier? But I, it's interesting because you have a lot of ministers that would come in and they would run the meetings. Um, you know, basically it was, a, it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful way. And I didn't realize this was even being done before at the time of the civil war. Things happen to people, they need help. So the community comes forward and helps. Anybody else have any questions? I want to thank uh, uh, Connie and Linnell for for coming up and and coming coming out and, and be actually being willing. They were they were ready to traipse to the to the library uh, this evening. And Connie was very very patient, working through trying to figure out how to get on teams. Uh, so thank you for for your perseverance. Um, and uh, there's additional information about the Preservation Society in our share file. So there actually are two two PDF file, uh, files, one with the presentation we just saw, and then another one with additional information about the society. Um, yours is a relatively new society. Do you want to speak just a, very briefly about what you're doing? Go ahead, Linnell. Linnell. OK, I'm sorry. So actually, I wanted to add on that I actually went to the library. So I drove from my side of town and drove to the library. <laughs> And come to find out, the uh, Mr. Chris said, oh, it's not here. I was like, OK. So I had to drive all the way back and get here on time so I can have the meeting with you guys. But oh, well, I just took a joy ride of Fairfax. <laughs> but anyway, so I, <laughs> our society, what we're trying to do, basically, in so many words, in the summer, we're trying to preserve the cemetery. We know that it's been there for many of years, and there have been many people buried there. And of course, I didn't realize until you know I got with Mary Lipsy and Janae that you know I just thought I had one ancestor buried there. Come to find out, I have several buried there. So because of that, that makes me a little bit more active, and 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 I feel like it's a it's a, a honor to make sure that that cemetery is preserved because we have you know the history that's attached to it my ancestors that attached to it and the land that it came from. And I do want to add, and I guess you guys already know that the Radcliffe family showed up in my DNA. So with that being said, it must have been an extension onto the family somewhere with the fit to the Radcliffe and my ancestors. So I think it's more to the story. We wouldn't probably never know, but it's more to the story. I think they gave them the land. I know, Janae, we talked about that, that the land was given to them, but it had to be a monetary, you know, transaction between there. But I think there was more to the land being given to them. I think they knew that they were family. I think the Radcliffe was making sure that even though they were enslaved, I think he wanted to make sure that they had somewhere to be buried alongside with that. So with that being said, I'm doing my part as well as um, Ron Critterden and also Connie, we're doing our part to make sure, and so so many other people as, as well, are making sure that that land is respected and preserved and is that at least it will get the recognition of being a historical landmark one day, if not soon. Um, I, I, I'd i like to tell you one quick thing about this. As I was helping them and we were gathering information and we were gathering more people, um, as I was doing the research for them, I found out that the Collins was a common family name and was related mm -hmm. to many of the people. And I looked back and I realized we had a common ancestor. So I am related to all those people at Germantown. Mm -hmm. And the flood of emotion <clears throat> that came over me, realizing why I was loving doing this work so much and why it was so important to me, because I was doing work for my people as well. And I think as we all do more research, we're mm -hmm. going to discover these ties. And it's very important because obviously the way that those children were born, probably in a horrendous way. But we several generations back can, later can remember their names and remember who they are. And um, anyway, I just wanted to tell you that one piece that has happened with me personally that has been awe-inspiring. Uh, Miss Miss Lynn, do you have a question? 
I have a comment, Linnell. Yes. Love being in a room with you because you are related to everybody, sister. Oh I'm my gosh. I'm telling you. Phyllis I mean, Walker Ford, I declare I'm related to her because you know, Melinda Ford was my third time great grandma. We'll talk later, Miss um, Phyllis Walker Ford. We'll talk later. <laughs> See, you're wonderful. It's, it's a, it is an inspiration to me. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really enjoyable. Um, we appreciate you coming out and, and sharing that with us. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome to remain and, and listen in on the rest of our meeting, or you can head off and, and enjoy the rest of your, uh, your evening. Thank you, you so you. much. And thank you guys for allowing me to share or us to share about Germantown Cemetery Preservation Society. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great rest of your evening. Yeah. Right. Johnny you. and Linnell and Ron are super. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so we're going to move on with the more mundane parts of our meeting uh, and beginning with uh, I need a motion to uh, approve the minutes and pay the clerk. So moved. <laughs> I guess we can pay okay, the clerk. <laughs> um, all, all those in favor. Oh, yeah, we need a second. Sorry. Second. Esther. Esther, or thank you. All right. And then uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any uh, uh, abstentions? Hearing none, ma uh, motion passes unanimously. All right. And we can proceed to our treasurer's report. And thank you, Elliot, for all that you do on making those uh, minutes so, so comprehensive and readable. Um, Sue. Treasurer's report. I have a correction. Yeah. And as you can see, um, I have the printing order for 200 history conference cards. That's actually 100 history conference cards for $176. Um, we have another $176 that will be on next month. So I made a mistake. It's 100, not 200. We spent 352 on um, the 200 cards. And uh, the other thing is, if you're reading this online, um, the budget adjustment. Well, we were we were off by a dollar twenty three in mm -hmm. in August, and I guess a dollar twenty three is not much money. Barbara's shaking her head; she knows what I'm going to say. But I try to make things balanced, and they just don't. And so, <laughs> I'm trying my best by by getting answers. I guess the county doesn't care if it's thirty four dollars here or fifty some dollars there, but I'm trying very hard to keep this straight this year, at least. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sue, for, for doing that. It is uh, it is frustrating to figure out those little weird dollar amounts like that. Um, Not that a dollar right. free buys a cup of coffee these days. Um, and so we, we our balance um, generally. So we have a balance of seventy thousand uh, plus dollars and. Correct. So what is what is there? The seventy thousand six seventy four and then the history conference two thousand twenty five sixty one uh, going into it. OK. All right. So thank you. Uh, so let's move on to staff reports. Uh, Liz, I think you're here for Amy. Yes, I am. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, first, uh, let me report on that. Um, uh, the Oak Hill event took place, um, I guess that was the weekend before last, and um, we did, uh, we did presentate, there were presentations at that, uh, tours of the house, etc. I probably, I was asked to come back and give the, the presentation that I had, um, had given years previously, and I probably ended up in a two and a half hour period giving that presentation, probably somewhere between, oh, I don't know, uh, eight and 10 times. So, um, it, and it was very, very well attended. But I have to say, I never got off the porch where I was presenting, so I didn't get to see anything else. But it was, it was a well-attended event, and um, 
I was glad to be part of it. Um, as part of Archaeology Month, um, we're doing a number of things. Uh, we will have a presence at Centerville Day. Um, Tyler Ball and a couple of other staff people will be out there um, and will be set up interpreting the archaeology um, of Centerville. So we will have a presence there as well as part of Archaeology Month as part of our cemetery initiative. Um, Amy has enlisted um, or has, you know, um, looking for volunteers to go out and do cleanups at the various cemeteries. Um, and I know she has uh, an event that is for the on the 15th and then another one on the following weekend. And so if you want more information on that, if you wanted to send me an email, I can send you her schedule, the schedule that she's got online for that. But there will be cemetery cleanups um, as well. We have now finished um, up the fieldwork portion of the archaeology at Riverbend Park. Um, so uh, staff is in the, um, you know, now doing the uh, artifact analysis and report writing for that. And um, uh, one thing, uh, kudos to uh, uh, folks at DPD and elsewhere, and I was part of this for um, uh, there, there's, there was an award given for the efforts for the uh, establishment of the historic overlay district at Wellington River Farm. So this is, you know, it's just a recognition of the historic preservation that's that's gone on at that location. And so that's probably good enough for me for tonight. But if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me now or email me later. Thanks. OK, thank you, Liz. Anybody have any questions for Liz? We are looking forward to seeing you at center. Uh, well, seeing your team at Centerville Day. Um, all right, um, we can continue on. Uh, Heritage Branch, and I'm sorry, I didn't call attendance of the staff earlier. A little, a little distracted. Uh, Stephanie. Hi, yes, hi everyone. Um, just a few updates tonight. Uh, under operations and maintenance, Work continues at Drainsville Tavern to repair termite damage. Um, updates are posted on our Resident Curator Program website. And um, for the Resident Curator Program, EHT Traceries continues work on um, Union Farms, HSR, and treatment plan. And that's all I have. Um, are there any questions? And Cheryl, oh, I'd just like to add one other thing. Um, as of last Monday, we welcomed our new um, archaeological and museum collections manager, um, Kelsey Atwood. Uh, she came to us from a museum in Arkansas, um, and she had um, uh, gone to uh, the museum program at George Washington University and had worked at a number of museums in the DC area prior to going to Arkansas. So we're very pleased to have her. She has been uh, taking some time going to different uh, our different historic sites and then going through all of the requisite training that is uh, currently mandated from the park authority. So we've been doing that and we've been out to Walney and she's been working with Heather Hembry with the archaeological collection. So at some point in time, uh, you know, Amy can have her come to the history commission meeting and introduce herself to you all. So I just wanted to add that. Look forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, Good to have someone in that position. 
All right, and thank you, Stephanie, for your uh, for your report. Sure. Moving along, Chris. Good evening, Phyllis Walker Ford. It has been an esteemed pleasure working with you on the commission over these last several years. Uh, thank you for all the support you've given me in the Virginia room over the years and just picking up the phone and you've always been happy to answer my questions and I will continue to call you. So you're not <laughs> off the hook. So thank you for all, all of your over the years. You. Thank you. <laughs> so the History Commission's losing some people, but here's my segue. The Virginia Room has gained somebody. So we're excited to announce on October 24th, we're gonna be finally fully staffed. We're having Jenna Wolf. She is our new Virginia Room Librarian One, and she comes from us from Montgomery County. So we're really excited about that. Uh, this past month, staff gave a bunch of tours to a bunch of people. Uh, the Fairfax Library Foundation Board had the retreat at the library and we gave them a tour and a scavenger hunt. The Fairfax County Youth Leadership's high school students were in town, so we had 30 or 40 students waltzing around the Virginia room and gave a tour to them. And Laura, Laura came, so I got to meet her, and that was a thrill. So that was what was going on this past month. Uh, there is a new display that we set up at Kings Park Library. It's the 50th anniversary of its opening this month, so go check it out if you're over that way. And a new item that we got was a 1920s pendulum clock featuring Mount Vernon from the estate of Ross and Nan Netherton. And that's now hanging in our Virginia Room staff meeting room. And last but not least, uh, the Friends of the Virginia Room book sale is happening Thursday, November 10th, Saturday, November 12th, and Sunday, November 13th. And we have a ton of books. That's not an understatement. We have thousands among thousands of genealogy books and tons of local history books. So if you're into that, come on out because we got a lot of good stuff. And that's it. <laughs> that sounds great. Any questions for Chris? Okay, uh, moving along. Um, Laura. Um, Chris might have been acting like he was being facetious. It was an absolute thrill because we went into the rare books room with Denise and Denise showed us her high school yearbook picture. So it was <laughs> quite the experience that afternoon. Good evening, commissioners. I have some news. Uh, I'm going to start with some uh, of the projects that we have ongoing and then get to the, the fun meat of things that I've been working on for the past month. Uh, home Run Acres, uh, the uh, potential uh, HOD that's going in, we the uh, the poll data has been uh, received and we are in the middle of the QC process. Uh, there has been a meeting uh, for the community that has been planned tentatively for October 20th at the Woodburn Elementary School, but if it's unavailable, it will be held virtually. Um, and any questions about Homes Run Acres, I invite you to ask Denise because I do not have any information on Homes Run Acres. Uh, the Gum Springs study, uh, there's no update there, no update to our modern architectural survey. Um, the African American context study and survey reports. So we have in our second draft from the consultants that came in in September of 22. It's being reviewed internally right now before we send it to the HC and the ARB in late 2022. Um, I have to tell y'all, I've taken a look at this and I'm doing, you know, Denise asked, or I asked Denise if she wanted to do a 50,000 foot perspective or a line perspective. And as you know, my background is in historic resource surveys, especially African American and rural resources. So I can tell you, I'm going through it line by line and it's pretty good so far. Like it's, it's well worth the time and effort uh, when it comes to y'all. And so once we get back comments from the HC and the ARB, we will open up uh, a community input session to get comments. Um, and it says early fall, but since it's October, I'm going to say arguably probably early 2023. That just seems reasonable. OK, um, so the rest in architectural survey uh, as part of the comprehensive plan, the uh, there was a bunch of community outreach meetings talking about the comprehensive plan. Um, and they're still, the task force is still accepting uh, comments until October 28th. Um, let's see, the two big changes have been made that were introduced to the board of the board's land use committee uh, actually last night um, that pertained to us. There was some um, uh, text that had been voted on for the comprehensive plan and they've included a map of the resources that were surveyed during the 2020 uh, rest in historic resources survey. So that is now part of the draft comprehensive plan that is going through 
the system. Um, no updates on wolf trap, uh, soapstone connector, or uh, okay, yeah, and finally, or um, the Army Corps of Engineer project we're working on with the DC area coastal storm risk management study. Other items. Y'all, our new planner is here. Her name is Stephanie, and Stephanie is going to work on the African American Markers Program. Stephanie, why don't you introduce yourself and say hello to the commissioners? Hello, commissioners. Uh, my name is Stephanie Newman. Hi. <laughs> um, I have a bachelor's in history from George Mason University in Fairfax and a master's in early modern history from Durham University in Northeast England. Um, I've done historic um, interpretation, both signage and um, presentations. And I was the survey coordinator for the Oklahoma State Historic Preservation Office um, for several years. And I'm excited to come here and help you guys out with the African-American Markers Program. Sounds great. Great. Yeah, great. we've already been meeting with Mary. We met with um, uh, Supervisor Paltrack. Paltrack. Uh, her <laughs> office this week um, just to get on on footing and Stephanie has hit the ground running. Um, you know, I told you all when we met last month that she's incredibly astute. You are in good hands. We no one in this meeting should be worried about the outcome of this project. It's going to be it's going to be wonderful. Um, so welcome, Stephanie. And I just want to know every time that we hire a planner within two weeks, we sit her down in front of the uh, History Commission, me being the first one. Now, Stephanie, so I don't know what's going to happen when we hire somebody else down the line. We're just going to have to like, it's firing squad. We're getting us out there. <laughs> okay. Um, we also are looking for um, another preservation planner who, or um, heritage resources planner, who will assist with uh, the architectural review board. So we're opening up that position again um, in, I guess, this month sometime. That's really in Denise's wellhouse. So if you uh, know anybody who wants to be a planner or wants to work with the ARB, Please send us their information. Please send them our posting. We will send it to y'all. Just disperse, disperse, disperse. Um, no new updates on the historic courthouse. Okay, fun thing. So I have been working, you know, y'all, I got your, I got new eyes. I, again, there's a lot of you and one of me. Um, I noticed some places where we could streamline some uh, previously used methods of doing things. Uh, like I've been working now with, um, or first identifying and then trying to contact and work with folks within Fairfax County to, you know, streamline things like using the P card. What are the policies of the P card? Who's actually supposed to be in charge of it? How do we get it? Yeah. So I'm working, I, you know, I have a bunch of emails out. I've gotten some responses back. I've gotten less responses back from others. So I'm working on, on that, you know, and especially to trying to figure out how other BACs do this teams thing, because we cannot be the only one or we might be the only one where staff logs in every time there's a committee meeting. That does not sound right to me. So we will um, we will be, uh, I'm looking into kind of uh, uh, figuring out better ways to streamline our government efficiency. Um, and I do wanna let you know that um, conference flyers have been dispersed to all three government buildings. So there's that, they're out there now. Um, the National Trust. So next month, November 1st through 4th, uh, they're doing their entire conference online. I mistakenly thought we were going to have to vote on this again tonight, but it turns out we did that last month. So if you want to go, I can set up the registration for it's one registration for up to 10 of you. So if 10 of you want to go to this, email me and let me know and I will put you on the list and you can learn all about all kinds of fun national trust based conference things. So just let me know. Yes. OK, excellent. And now. Where's Esther? There she is. All right, I talked to Esther about this a little bit last week. This is the most, I'm really excited about this because I think the work that you do is so incredible and needs to be shown to everyone. I now am the holder of the key of the display case at the government center, which I think is a great opportunity for it to become the history commissions, right? Display case. So I invite you all to think long and hard about past successes that we can show people. This is really, where's my Anne? Where's Anna? Uh, this is a great opportunity for advocacy. It's a great opportunity to get eyes, you know, let's say even 200 people stroll by it in a day. That's 200 people more than knew that this was an entity in the first place. So, and it could be anything, you know, we're gonna we're gonna work with um, 
the the curator program and we're going to pull things together but things like tangible history that you all with your institutional knowledge of not only the history commission but of all the projects you work on will have more um you know i hate to say artifacts but resources that we could display and really get out there so i am welcome to talk to you anyone who wants to talk to me about this about what displays you can do, what projects you could work on, you know, showing them future endeavors, showing them your past endeavors, showing them current things. It's all good. Uh, and the final thing is I sent the cemetery MOA back to the attorney, Pfeiffer's County <coughs> attorney, and she said she's going to look at it this week and get back to me. And that's where we're at. Does anyone have any questions for me? Lynn? Sorry. Emmy. Oh, go ahead. I think Lynn yeah, had her, name, her hand up first. Oh, OK. Uh, just quickly, um, Laura, I want to make sure which display case in the government center you're talking about. Is it the one when you're facing down into the forum on the right hand side or is it the one that's kind of off to the left that's got all that information currently about um, the um, Zion Church in Burke? No, no, no. It's the one on Neither. the right hand side and it's, I think it's entitled even like um, Historic resources or uh, yeah, something okay. like that of Fairfax right. County. Okay. Uh, yeah, right, right now there's. About. Yeah. That's it. That's all yeah. I wanted to ask. Okay. Yeah. And I'll get like uh, neon lights to point down to it so people will, you know, like see it and pay attention. It's like, no, it's History Commission. We got to see it. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, Tammy, my question um, is uh, well, I mean, it's more of a comment is um, the the fastest thing to do, I think, is to mirror what we already have on our History Commission board that we're taking around to Oak Hill and um, Historic Centerville is just to echo what we have there because we're already sharing that in some places. And um, and of course, you know, advertising the conference that's upcoming and maybe a nice little QR code in the window that takes people directly to the registration page. Um, so that's the first thing that I think of is, you know, let's just take what we already have. Yeah. And uh, and put it in there very quickly. Um, yeah. I think that would be the fastest answer. And then, of course, you know, advocacy has lots of opinions about everything. So I'm sure that we can run with that. So um, that is super exciting. I love that you have have that uh, nailed down and I love that you're excited about it. Yeah, whatever you guys want to send me, I will physically go put it in there. Great. Yeah. Um, uh, Anne, go ahead. We've and seen, I'm sorry, I uh, might be calling you out of order. But. What's in there? What's in there right now? The last time we were there, there was that good one that Liz's crew put together. It's it's the same one. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. It's um like uh, uh China from Fairfax yeah. County and other, yeah. but but it's been in there since 2019. And Denise was telling me that there's a remember it's only six weeks in there's like a big gala in january or something in the conference or in the <laughs> government center and like you know i think that that's another great opportunity to really showcase you know like we can get something in there temporarily for the fall just to show what we're doing right now but like to work on something comprehensive and maybe more forward thinking um when more people are in that building and getting eyes on it yeah and we've done things before everything you know with the case everything from putting artifacts in there. We've done things where um, archaeology and DPD have worked together on, you know, like joint things as well as um, other things. Usually what we do is archaeology will have it one year and then DPD will have it another. The reason the current um, display has been in there as long as it has is COVID. Um, so, um, but also um, off if you're facing, um, uh, you know, that case on the right hand side, on the left hand side, there's some more vertical cases. And we've done worked with some groups there to set up additional displays in those vertical cases. I know we did something for um, Black History Month one year. so. Uh, those are, um, they're um, controlled by the chairman's office, but, um, you know, that's another opportunity if there were more things you wanted to highlight. But those cases, um, you would need to talk to um, whomever is in um, the current uh, 
staff person with the chairman's office. Thank you for that. And anytime, Laura, if you want to coordinate with us, that would be fine. You are great. I look forward to it. And I missed Barbara Peters before. I'm sorry, Barbara. Um, I just wanted to say I was not in attendance last month and I didn't have the opportunity to meet you, but I love your enthusiasm, Laura. <laughs> well, and I, I think those who have met with individually might know this, but in fourth grade, my um, my award for the year at the end of the year was most enthusiastic. And I've just kept with that for the past. It works. Years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no slowing me down. That's for sure. But um, you know, as always, and again, I'm still working on meeting with all of the chairs one on one to really understand, you know, what your visions are, what you're working on, so that you know we can uh, during this transition period be as seamless as possible. There's going to be hiccups. We're human beings. It's local government, but we'll we'll figure it out. We'll get it done, right? Okay. Excellent. All right. Again? Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Laura, and thank you all the staff who, uh, who made reports to us tonight. Um, we're going to go a little bit out of order. Lynn is soldiering, uh, solder, you know, digging deep and coming in uh, for the meeting tonight, even though she really isn't feeling all that well. So we're going to bump her up and uh, hear the history conference and awards uh, reports to, uh, right now. Super, thank you, uh, Cheryl. Thank you for your flexibility, everybody. Um, yeah, I felt so crummy yesterday and last night I went out and bought a COVID kit and I do not have COVID, so that's a good thing, but I'm leading a seminar first thing in the morning and had to lead one yesterday and did a tour today out at Turning Point and I am just completely, completely wiped out. So thank you for understanding. Um, I also wanna point out that today, October 5th, is exactly a month from the conference. So. We've got a lot to do yet, but we're coming along, I think, pretty well. Liz, do we have any more updates on numbers from what you sent me earlier today? The the latest thing was one additional um, that Cindy Jordan sent me this afternoon. Okay, so what are we at? Six, something like that? We're at six, yes. Okay. And what's interesting is to, not to be too fooled by these numbers, but don't forget there's folks that are maybe going to come to this conference and do it live stream. So that... Uh, being said, I do want to tell you I have connected uh, now with Valerie Bay and her pal Albie from Channel 16. They will be our team to make the conference um, live this year, so I'm happy to, to say that. And we will get uh, Val as one of the last times she does something like this for the county. She's getting ready to retire the first part of 2023, so we will miss her very much. Um, Sue, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have been an absolute, absolute um, amazing, not just a soldier, but an officer in the distribution of all these brochures all over the county. So thank you so much for that. Um, and you've still got some. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. I got to pick mine up. 43, the and they're not, going in, do, they're not doing any good in my house. 43, whoever needs 43? them. Yes, please. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll take dibs on 20. And we'll talk about that offline. Um, so, but I do want to thank you very much for that. And I also, Sue, want to thank you for all the um, effort you're putting into, and Laura, please stay on this too with the whole P-card issues, because the payment of all the disparate things that will need to happen to come together for the food at this conference this year is quite um, ginormous, because this is what our, our, our menu is beginning to look like. We are definitely going to have lox and bagels, thanks to uh, Jordan. He's going to make that happen. looks like Jason's is going to provide at least pasta and beverages and probably some kind of salad. We've got German sandwiches coming as of this afternoon, possibly Irish shepherd pies um, from Old Shebane. And do, 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 what else do we have here? Um, oh, those shamrocks, uh, uh, shortbread shamrocks that I talked about last, last, last month. Um, also, uh, we're working with the county to get the W-2s that are going to need to be processed for the presenters and for the awardees. I'll talk about the awardees here in just a minute. Um, so that's P cards. We're done with that. Also, in, in terms of food too, Esther has uh, pointed out that one of the things that the African-American community was very good at doing was being able to bring to some of their church events cookies, cookies. So Esther's going to take on chocolate chip cookies for us for the conference. Um, 
we talked about that, talked about that. Uh, let's see. I do want to say to our committee member, Ann Barnes, who's, who we've, we have missed this year, and I apologize, I will not be able to, to join you in the celebration of the life of your beloved hubby, uh, Tom. Um, I had made a previous commitment to the Bull, Roll, Bull Run Civil War Roundtable to be joining them at George Mason Friday for the dedication at the Fires Crossroads um, event. I had been asked to do that at Blenheim earlier this year. So, um, and thoughts are with you and just miss you a whole lot and looking forward to, to seeing you again very soon. Uh, right, let's see, anything else on my list here? We've got our detective the brochures. Do need to know, I don't know, is David Meyer on this call? I don't see him. Do need to get with David to find out who our contact person is at Sherwood, we don't have that yet. And Esther and I, you'll need to get together to talk about tablecloths and things like that, like we usually do. All right, our next meeting is scheduled for the 26th of October. And uh, so I'll need to get some information in about that to you all uh, who keep track of such meetings. Let me go on to awards. Um, not much has changed. Do you have questions? Yes, yes. Yes. yes, go ahead, Esther. Uh, Lynn, you failed to mention that Commissioners need to register if they're attending in person. Yes, thank you that's, for that's that That's part of the registration. Yeah, that's the, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, commissioners, we don't come free for charge. We free of charge, we do pay our way. So please, please sign up and that'll also give us a better idea of what our numbers are. Thank you, Esther, it was helpful. Anything else I left out that you could think of? No, Esther, Esther keeps me in line, that's for sure. Um, okay. Lynn, yes. Yeah, sir. The Sue put her hand up, and uh, Carol also. Oh, so I'm, so, I apologize. I missed that. Go ahead, Sue. Okay. I I have a question, Lynn. Did I miss something, or maybe I'm not understanding? Are there only six people registered for this so far? Uh huh. Oh, and that's dear. kind of not, and that's not so much an oh dear. They come the, because the brochures have just gotten out now in the last couple of weeks, and our RSVP day is the 28th. What tends to happen, and poor Cindy, God love her for uh, agreeing to do this, is come next week and the week after is when the registrations will come in. However, if this conference, and we've got several exhibitors too, I know that, um, that have signed up. And so I, I think even if it's a tiny conference of 20 to 30, fine, we spend less money on food and it's a little bit more intimate. Um, but yeah, does just kind of know what that past practice is. And yes, thank you, Esther, for the nudge for commissioners to go ahead and sign up and, and get their information in. OK, did that help, Sue? That was my question, too. Yeah. <laughs> OK, OK, Carol, you asked, you said that. OK, yeah, okie doke. Yeah, anybody else? OK, uh, one more question then. How many exhibitors? I think Excellent. what uh, ask, let's see. Let's ask Liz. Um, what do we have? Two or three? It's it's not like we don't have anybody. Liz, what is what do our numbers look like for exhibitors? I'd have to go back and look at that email I sent you, Lynn. Just bear with me a second. I think it was two or three. I know when I read it, I was like, well, okay, that's better than zero. Okay, thank you. I'll put it in the chat when I find it. When you find it, okay, fine, thank you. Um, all right, so let me go. Anything else? Conference committee. It, sh it should be a lot of fun, um, and really nice to get back together again in in public. Uh, in terms of the awards committee, everything pretty much stands as last month. Uh, Elise brought forth a good question that our um, awardee for um, the Mayo Stunts Award could not be awarded two awards in one year. So we have checked in on him and we have asked that, um, you know, he make a, a decision. And as he, he is suggesting, he wants to enter one this year and one next year. So the award that he's, or the video that he is uh, entering for this year, and I think the awards committee's already seen this, is the Gravel Pits before it was Kingstown. It's a wonderful little video. It's under 30. 30 minutes and it really talks about the whole history of, of the Kingstown area of Alexandria. So I think that's all I have for the moment. Okie doke. Thank you guys. Thank you for understanding. I am 
just beat. Carry on. Do good things. Thank, thank you, Lynn. You're welcome. All right. Um, so we're going to return to our, our regular programming, um, our regular order. Unfinished business. Um, I We need to have a nominating committee in order to put together a, a slate for uh, next month for voting in December, I believe, is how the process works. Um, and I know that Phyllis very graciously agreed to be chair of the nominating committee, and Carol also very graciously agreed to be on that committee. We do need one more member, so if anybody wishes to pipe up and volunteer uh, this evening, now is a good time. Um, but uh, we can also, you know, I can, you know, there are folks who are not here who we could, we can sort of nominate in abstention for, uh, for being on that committee. Um, and so if you, you know, we do, we do need just one more person on that committee. So just let me know if you uh, wish to be, be uh, serving. If not, you'll be hearing from me and I will be um, gently, tw gently twisting arms. Um, all right. Um, so I have new old business in in together because there is a new thing that has come up with regard to the courthouse. Um, Sue, if you can address that, I realize that you haven't had a lot of time to fully examine all those papers, but um. yeah, sure. Um, the history commission just last late last week uh, got something about a cellular antenna facility that will be. Um, at 4110 Chainbridge Road, that's right um, near the courthouse. It actually has several buildings with that address. Uh, they identify it as the Chancery Building. Uh, and I did ask David Meyer because I think this is part of the overall larger historic area. And also asked, did ask Jordan if he could um, tell me a little bit about compliance for section 106 and whether we need to do anything as, with, as the history commission. So yes, I will have to get back to you. And I think there are antennas there already. So I'm not sure it's an exact um, new thing. I think it's just a replacement process, but I'll, I'll do that in the next few days. I'm sorry, I couldn't get to it when I found out, Sarah. That's uh, okay. Yeah, no. Is, you know, this is courthouse related, and Laura um, had had spoken about this before. The um, on October this this coming Tuesday, actually, the money, the funds are being approved for that uh, at the courthouse, and and that's a definite given according to Supervisor Palchik's office. Um, but um, I, I, don't, I don't know more than that exactly the amount. So it, masonry stuff and all that, everyone here did to get that done. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's good news. Yeah. Um, and uh, Janae, I don't know if you want to just briefly describe um, sort of where where we're at with regard to uh, courthouse signage. Um, um, because it no longer is a structure project, it is only a signage project. Basically, um, as Cheryl suggested, if we want to have a sign, we have to go through the marker committee. And so it's no longer a, a process that would go with all of us. You know, I'd, I'd hope that there was more salvageable pieces of the, of the old well, but there's just not. So that's where we are. So thank you for as we went down that and explored that possibility. Yeah, it, you know, as we as we've been talking to courthouse staff, and, you know, it sort of emerged that there there is no uh, roadside marker, no history commission yeah. marker for the courthouse, and so it seemed like that was really sort of our, our should be our first priority, mm -hmm. uh, and it's yeah. within the norms that we have established. So, you know, take a look at that. I know that there was some investigation into that uh, some years ago with the, um, and there were some logistical issues. But with the renovations coming up, perhaps um, you know there are other opportunities, and yeah, you know, that's a you know like the marker committee uh, can can. So uh, this would be this would be out. somebody putting a um, suggestion into the marker committee, or does it come from within the marker committee? Like, does the suggestion come with from within the marker committee? Well, it, it in part depends on whether the friends of the courthouse wants to uh, make a an application. 
my gosh. Yeah, so basically, you know, Cheryl asked me, she said, would we have the funds to help support it? And, you know, if, if the History Commission paid half and we paid half, and I said, yes, we would. So that's basically as far as we've got. Okay. So tell me, that's you. where we are. <laughs> I got you. Okay. So it's kind of, so it's sort of in the, in the friends group to take the next step and propose yeah. something. And, and, and I would obviously, to do something like that, I would need to go and certainly consult with Heather. And do you know what I mean? There, there's a, there's a, there's a whole level sure. that I would yeah. need to do before we would submit something like that. So yeah. anyway, right. that's <laughs> what, that's what happened. That's the story. Cool. That sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Esther. Yes. Uh, traditionally, the marker committee receives information. We do not go out and put the information together. I see Mary nodding. We receive information and we make sure that it seems accurate and seems representative of what's being marked. Okay. Thank you. And Janae, the whole submission process is online. Yeah. Okay. The History Commission website. Okay. Right. Okay, I will not be able to get to it this month, but it will yeah. be on my to-do list. Yeah, I, I think with the renovations, this is going to be a long-term. Uh -huh. I think so, too. I think so, too. And, and you know, Heather obviously is going to be the main ringleader if we do this anyway. So it's a matter of, yeah. I don't know what her time is like. So, but yeah. anyway, that's yeah. where we are. But, Thank you. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Um, going to skip right down to uh, African-American history. That should be in inventory, sorry. I don't know why it hasn't, must be an old uh, cut and paste that I did. Anyway, the African-American history inventory, Phyllis and Mary. Um, we are still waiting on the uh, signature for the MOU. We know that George Mason has signed off on it and I believe it's already sent to the county executive for his signature. Wahoo! <laughs> <laughs> so soon as we know, we'll just wait for the word that is signed. We'll get you the website as soon as we know what the website is, and um, we're excited. I just want to say, Phyllis, it's been a pleasure, and I, you know I'm not going to let you fade into the a wallpaper. So uh, <laughs> you know we'll we'll continue working on all of this stuff together. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, okay, and then we have uh, Gretchen has a written report on the semi uh, sequentennial. So usually I can get that right. Semi quincentennial. Um, most of the initial part of the report is about uh, interesting developments coming up with the state group. Uh, then a report on the Fairfax County Work Group. Um, and the uh, members for our uh, committee will be Gretchen, Mary, Sue Schumann, and Jordan Tannenbaum. Uh, but the committee has not yet met. But thank you, all of those folks who are participating in that committee um, as things are starting to, to develop. Um, uh, advocacy and annual report, Anne. Uh, let's see. Yes, um, we had a great day at Oak Hill that um, that Sue, who is the, the 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 recent star of advocacy, I think uh, Tammy got us off to a good start early in the year. And now Sue, thank you very much for getting these um, these cards. It's hard because you know there's only a few hundred cards and a million residents but as long as they're posted in places not just you know when i take them to libraries and stuff i say put one up on the bulletin board and keep this little pile here so if if you get your hands on them find ways to maximize their visibility and um so so um i like liz was stuck on the porch i was stuck in the history tent it was really nice it was very busy i hope they got a, a head count for how many people were visiting it was very well attended and people were very engaged in the this was a big history tent that the park authority put up 
and there was uh, there must have been 10, 10 different organizations there. So it was real good network. It was like a little history village like we've done now and then. Um, and I think what's our next date is going to be um, Centerville Day on the 15th. So we're just uh, getting through our calendar and I uh, hope to have a meeting this fall later. Any, anything to add, committee? Yes, I have everything at my house for Cheryl. So we will talk offline about getting it to you. Thanks. Sounds good. And Barbara. Um, unfortunately, you know, we got the cards and the information a little late. I mean, most of our supervisors do newsletters uh, on a monthly basis. And by the time I got it over to Penny, um, that I mean, I knew that the October had already gone out. So she's going to put it in her November newsletter, but that's really too late for us. I've always counted on them getting it electronically. I mean, not that they do, but that, that's, it was, you're right, it, it was finalized kind of uh, with not quite enough time either, wasn't it, Barbara? I mean, so, we just need more lead time on things. Company. Yeah. Well, let's remember that just lessons learned for next year, that we need to get them something, even if it's not that level of detail. Exactly. We we need to get the information out there to start sharing way before a month ahead. Yeah. It's yeah. just not enough time. That's a really good point. Okay, one more one more lesson learned for next year. Yeah. Thank you. Tammy. Um, I was just going to add that I um, printed out the registration forms, just, you know, like 20 of them, and I took them to um, each of the two local branches of the library and put some at, at each library. They're happy to display them for us. And um, so they're right on a card table, right out in front of the library. So if, if you have a local library, just print out 10 and take them to your local library. And then I also... Um, took 10 and took them to the supervisor's office and they were happy to put them out there as well. So um, so we, we can do that. Um, you know, we all don't necessarily have to have the cards. Sometimes just the registration form is enough and you might not need a ton, but you know, that that might be how we, how we get a few more people registered. Um, and then has anyone shared it yet on Facebook? Um, because often, I will say that this is what I did last year, was one person, I forget whether it was Cheryl or somebody, shared it on Facebook, and then I just, you know, took, rather than reinvent the wheel, I just took theirs and shared it on my Facebook or, and in the groups, the history groups that I belong to on Facebook, and just shared them that way. So if somebody um, puts it on Facebook, we can Lynn all did, kind of... Lynn did oh. put it on Facebook. And that's probably... Let's, check, let's check Lynn's. Okay. Good, yeah. because we can all, I mean, that's free. Yeah. You so. can just share that one. Well, and, yeah. and a lot of the, the, even the libraries, I mean, the volume of traffic in our supervisor's offices or in the libraries is, is much diminished over what yeah. it used to be. So we're not reaching as many people in those kinds of places. Right. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, you know, you get a few here and there. Um, right. Yeah, let's look. Um, if she has, if she did put it on Facebook, it's not the first thing on her on her page. So let's let's it get was, her to share it again, and we can all just start sharing it a lot. Yeah, I should have thought of it while she was talking about the conference. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Good idea. But that's a great way to get it out. And any, if anybody's on, you're active on Nextdoor or any of those. Oh yeah. You never know who you might get. Well, and I mean, if, if I get a hold of it, I, I mean, I'm on the DAR uh, in Falls Church, and that's another place to advertise. Um, I traditionally send it to Brian Heinz at West Springfield to ask the students, has anybody done that this year? No, no. probably okay. not. If you, yeah, if that's you, a good idea. Okay, because we, you know, we, I know that Lynn said that um, there's a budget for 10 students uh, to attend. And so I'll, I'll put that on my to-do list. Yeah, that's a good, another good idea. Yeah. All right. All right, those are some, some good brainstorming. Uh, and 
uh, we can continue on. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Mason and Nova, right? I mean, we have they, contacted they're, Mason already. They, they're, they're there. They, they got that right at the beginning of August, and it's been posted all over in Johnson Center, which you need permission to do. And Nova, yes, um, it went to Charlie Evans and Mark DeLuke, or two of the profs there, and they shared it. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Sue. All right, moving along then um, to markers uh, and marker project, Mary Lipsy. Okay, all right, we have um, two markers that are being worked on. One is the history of Maryfield, and the other one is um, a marker to be placed near the Bellhaven Country Club that will honor John West and his family, John West, was the longest uh, member of the House of Burgesses. Uh, so I'm working with both of them. The difficulty with the um, uh, one at Bell Haven is finding a location. Since it's now become a gated country club, uh, yeah. people just can't drive in if we put it inside and finding a location outside. <clears throat> so I'm working with Heather and trying to get a plat and figure out where we could um, put that. And uh, the History Marker Project, uh, all the uh, participants are getting certificates of appreciation. There's plans to recognize the finalists with a presentation before the Board of Supervisors. And I met with Laura and uh, Stephanie about that. And Stephanie and I connected about a, um, a time, I don't know how many years ago it was, Stephanie, that she was working on getting a marker for a relative at the frying pan uh, uh, cemetery there. So we yeah. knew that we already knew each other. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and uh, do I go right to cemetery or is that, do I hold on? I didn't put the agenda in front of myself. Uh, yeah, no, cemeteries would be next. Okay. okay. Uh, comments. I've been working on researching the Germantown Cemetery, and, and it's it's really fascinating uh, to see all the connections between the families, that that really was a community of people, you know, in the area. I have a, a scout who's interested on in working at the Sons and Daughters Cemetery at Pine Ridge Park. Uh, there's a lot more brush removal that needs done, but I'm also encouraging him to map, make a map of the cemetery <clears throat> so that we will have that. Uh, next Tuesday, I'm presenting to NOVA LLI about the history of the African-American cemeteries. Our consortium has met twice. We now have an official name agreed to by those members. It's the Northern Virginia Cemetery Consortium. And Culpepper and Flock here and all were okay with that. So, because uh, we discussed what we would call ourselves. Amy gave us an excellent uh, presentation on what she's doing is the county surveys. And uh, I can tell you that uh, the cemeteries that she's doing, one that's uh, included is the Germantown Indigent, I shouldn't call it Germantown. It's the Indigent Cemetery on Germantown Road, not to be confused with the Germantown Cemetery, okay? Um, and she also is working with the maintenance uh, crew there since the, uh, maintenance area is all locked up. That means the cemetery is locked up on weekends. And she's working with them to see if there's a way they could figure out so that family members could go in there uh, to visit. We have our next consortium meeting. Well, first of all, there's six of us in this uh, group uh, representing Northern Virginia. And we're going to be constructing a directory about our group and then also a list of resources. And next meeting in December, we're going to discuss the possibilities of establishing a website and a Facebook page. And we're trying to have a presentation at uh, each of our meetings. And so uh, Jim Bish, if any of you know him, he's in the Culpepper, represents Culpepper, and he's going to talk about the challenges <laughs> he faces with his group, uh, which right now is a group of two, uh, and cemetery preservation in um, uh, Culpepper. And that is it. Any questions? That's a lot, Perry. Thank you. Uh
All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Esther, ethnic and oral history. Yes, thank you very much. Ethnic and oral history had a brief meeting September 27th. We had four people there, so we didn't have a quorum. We just discussed projects and uh, we would have to bring information back to the next meeting. The next meeting is October 25th, Tuesday, October 25th at 7 p.m. All right, thank you, Esther. Thank you. Um, Bob, I don't think is here. Did not see him come on board. Uh, no, I snuck in, so, but I oh, don't have to report. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to know that you actually are here um, and, and we can record that as at least, but thank all you. Right. Oh, there you go, I do see you. Okay. Um, all right. Um, thank you. Um, um, David Meyer is David today is also <clears throat> Meyer to talk about Fairfax things going on there. All right. Um, and I don't really have anything to report with regard to the website. I mean, we talked about a few ideas in, in oral and ethnic history, but you know, that's just some I you know brainstorming. Mary. Uh, on yourself, right? Um, on the website, it still says we are meeting at the library, which is probably where Connie got oh. that information. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Good point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. As soon as you uh, change it, we may be back at the library. But who knows? Well, yeah, the library is probably you know. So we don't, you know. After having all these rumors that we were going to imminently start meeting in person and that they, um, the the emergency the state of emergency would be over, it's still here, um, right. and we're we're still able to meet wholly electronically. Uh, when we do move to in person meetings, if the library schedule is what it is currently, um, we will probably I think Laura has found a really snazzy room in the government center for us. Um, and so we would probably be meeting there for at least a while. And th that will facilitate uh, hybrid meetings. Am I right, Laura? There. Yeah, is, is that a thumbs up? <laughs> um, so yeah, I will I will do address that because yes, and, and I noticed that you know on our um, on the public meetings calendar, it also gives the library as the location, and then it cancels that location, and it you know puts the virtual meeting up. It's just the way that calendar works. All right, does anybody have uh, any announcements that they want to share? Yeah. Um. Well, I imagine Sue Schumann is going to talk about her uh, talk for the. Friends of the Virginia Room. Have we talked about that yet tonight? It's um, I believe that meeting is in person at the library on the 30th of October. Yes. We can all come in costume to that. But I'm really looking forward to hearing about your book, Sue. And um, and we have that wonderful Sue organized us a great meeting at Laurel Schoolhouse. Thank you, Phyllis. That was so good. I'm and then I'm just going to, I'm going to share with you one stanza of a poem my father wrote. And if you behave, I will never read you any more. But I want, I want you to hear just the first of seven. He wrote this, I don't know when, it was based on Book of uh, Robert Service poems, his favorite poet. When the historical site is threatened and the bulldozers are moving fast, then it's time for the History Commission to go before the mast. And, and maybe I'll read it for our Christmas party, if, if you encourage me. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. I'm I, sure, I, sure, I sure hope we have that this year. Um, I saw a hand raise, was that Steve or Carol? 
is a phone number. Or is it Bob? Phone number ending nine nine four nine nine four. Okay, must be a um, Chris. Yeah, I could fill in for David on two random city of Fairfax um, tidbits tonight. Um, one is, does anybody remember Red Barn, like the fast food chain Red Barn? Yeah, it was yeah. like from the '60s and went went to the the mid '80s. Uh, well, there are three locations in Fairfax County, one of which was in Fairfax City, and they started tearing it down today for a Taco Bell. And so I went over there and took some pictures, and it's halfway down. But it's really cool because if you peek in, you could see one of the original murals that was above the doorway there. I guess they covered it up over the years, so that's exposed. It'll probably come down tomorrow, but if you want to relive Red Bar nostalgia, you can go out and check that out tomorrow morning. And the other is, I don't know if you're familiar with the Breezeway Motel that's on Fairfax Boulevard, just down the street from the Red Barn. That's going to get demolished for housing and, and multi-purpose properties or whatever. Um, but there's a really cool neon sign that's in front of it that dates to when that motel opened that says Breezeway Motel. Um, and I had reached out to the lawyer this past week to see if it was going to be preserved. And the city of Fairfax has decided to preserve it. So I, I think it's going to the museum. And I guess the museum is eventually going to be uh, expanded. And I, Susan Gray's pie in the sky dream is to hang it from the ceiling somehow like they have at the Smithsonian. So that's going to be saved as well. But that's just wanted to kind of throw that out there tonight. All right. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else have anything to announce or share? Um, all right. And I think, even though it's only nine o'clock, I mean, we could just keep going a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> we will, I think. We will then adjourn at 9.09. .09. Thank you all for coming out. I know, uh, you know, it's a very, very busy time of the year for everybody. And I appreciate you all coming and, uh, and somebody think about volunteering for that nominating committee. All right. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Celebrate night. ending early. I just <laughs> want to tell you how That's good you look on the Excellent. steps. You know, the, the, one that puts everybody on a step. It's one of the views in the three dots. More. Oh, well, that's right. Yes, you're, you're, everybody sits yeah, in the lobby. And you look good in the parts. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about, Carol. You don't know. You can do different, <laughs> different configurations of people in the meeting. So you go to the three dots, the more action, and you can tell it together mode, which puts everybody behind a table step. I don't have that one. No, I don't either. <laughs> well, it's the three little dots next to the hand. It's under together mode. More more actions yes together most it's to the left of the hand yes yeah it's right to the left of the hand <laughs> yeah i don't have together mode yeah i got you esther <laughs> i got it yeah i can see it it's okay. a well, we're like in, it in the forest <laughs> we're in an outdoor atrium you know an outdoor uh... have a good night Good night, everybody. Uh, by the way, one, uh, one exhibitor so far. So, thank you, everybody. Bye. See you next Bye, time. Listeners. Thanks, y'all. Good night. <laughs>